Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Glazer Family Club. My name is Jason Coyer, and I'm the Assistant Athletic Director for Strategic Communications here at Tulane. At this time, I'd like to remind everyone to please silence your cell phones in advance of today's remarks. After Coach Langford's comments, she'll take a handful of media questions right here, and then following that, we'll have the additional me media availability downstairs in the bunker suite. Before we, before we proceed, I'd like to remind everyone that we have women's basketball season tickets on sale here today. So please see Ari once we finish this afternoon. He'll take care of all your ticketing needs. This time, I'd like to invite to the stage in his first year at the university, Tulane's Ben Weiner, Director of Athletics Chair, Mr. David Harris. Good afternoon, everyone. Another great day to be a member of the Greenway family. Thank you so much for being here as we welcome Ashley back uh, to Uptown. Uh, as I said uh, in a previous press conference, whenever you have uh, a day like this, uh, there are a lot of people that work behind the scenes to bring it together, to make it happen. And I want to take a minute to just thank uh, some of those people uh, starting with our president, Mike Fitz, and our chief operating officer, uh, Patrick Norton. Uh, they provide us the leadership at the university level uh, to make sure that we have the resources that we need uh, to be able to have success, including uh, to be able to hire fantastic coaches like Ashley. Uh, so we're very fortunate to be able to have uh, them in their leadership. Uh, Jana Woodson, who's uh, one of our deputy ADs, uh, who assisted me with the search, who did a phenomenal job uh, in helping us throughout the process from beginning to end. Uh, so she was a great partner uh, through this process. Uh, Victoria Johnson uh, in the general counsel's office here at Tulane, uh, who has provided some help with us as we've gone through uh, looking at contracts and uh, the information that we needed to make sure that we could secure and have, every, have everything uh, in line the way that it should be. Uh, our partners with uh, Collegiate Sports Associates, they were the executive firm uh, that helped us with the search. Uh, they do a, a great job from the very beginning uh, in helping to facilitate this process and cover all the details that are needed. Uh, and then all of our athletic staff members, uh, likely too many to name when you have uh, something like this going for everyone who worked behind the scenes uh, to help today come together. Uh, we're very fortunate to be able to have you uh, and we thank you so much for what you've done to help us throughout the process. As is the case when you are uh, hiring a head coach, but especially today in today's world of college athletics with so many things uh, happening so quickly, uh, you want to move quickly, but the most important thing is that you make the right choice for your department, for your program, and for your university. Uh, we were very fortunate in that we had a talented pool of assistant coaches, associate head coaches, and head coaches uh, that were interested in this position. They were interested uh, in Tulane. Uh, and so we were able to have good conversations. But uh, I can honestly say, going into this process, uh, that uh, Ashley was a candidate that was at the top of my list. And uh, as we went throughout the process, uh, I wanted to see if anything would happen or if we'd have a chance to speak with anybody uh, that changed that. But that did not change. Uh, Ashley coming into the process during the process uh, and as we got to the conclusion she was clearly uh, the best person for the position for a number of reasons. Uh, I'll start with academic commitment uh, at a place like Tulane but really in, in my mind in any place in college athletics uh, academics has to be first and foremost and with Ashley we have a former scholar athlete of the year as well as someone whose team had a 3.14 uh, GPA and so clearly there is a commitment uh, to doing things the right way on the academic side and making sure that these young women leave the university uh, with their degrees and moving forward uh, in their lives in a positive direction. Career as a student athlete. Uh, so Ashley is a three time all conference player, a freshman all American, uh, our career leader in assists, total assists, assists per game and minutes played. Uh, and she was inducted into our Hall of Fame uh, in 2018. So certainly as a player, uh, she was phenomenal uh, for Tulane University. Uh, experience as an assistant coach. 
Uh, so she has a background at a number of different places, including James Madison, Denver, Bucknell, uh, Old Dominion, and Navy. So we know we were getting someone uh, that had a great foundation and has seen a number of different programs uh, and understands what different programs have done. And she's able to take that and put it into her own game plan on how she approaches being a head coach. Uh, she's a proven winner. Uh, her record over the last three seasons as a head coach is 69 and 24. Uh, that's a 74% uh, win percentage. Uh, thankfully, somebody put the percentage down because I wouldn't have been able to do the math. Math wasn't my strong suit, but they tell me it's 74% win percentage, uh, a record of 36 and 6 at home. Uh, conference regular season champions with a record of 16 and 2. Conference coach of the year. Uh, and the fastest ever at Stony Brook to 50 victories in program history. Uh, great ability to recruit. She has recruited and coached 22 all-conference selections, two players of the year, two rookies of the year, and one two-time defensive player of the year. Also, the ability to develop student athletes. Has coached two WNBA draft picks, 11 players playing professionally uh, overseas, and one Olympian a great love and passion uh, for student athletes, and that came across uh, in the interview, in the conversations that we were able to have. Uh, she just clearly uh, loves the young women who play the sport that she has an opportunity to be able to connect with, to coach, uh, and to lead. Uh, and sometimes you sit across from someone and that immediately comes across. You can immediately tell uh, that they are doing their life's work, that they're doing what they're meant to do. Uh, and so that was extremely important to us as we went through the process. Uh, and then finally, a connection to our university, to the city of New Orleans, and to the legacy of Coach Stockton, who uh, has put a lifetime of work into building uh, the Tulane women's basketball program. So for us, uh, we feel like Coach Langford uh, checked every box uh, imaginable uh, as far as qualifications. There was a reason she was at the top of the list. Uh, as someone uh, that we wanted to consider for this position, uh, and there's a reason that she has emerged as being uh, the very best candidate uh, for this position. So it's an honor to welcome home one of the best to ever wear the olive and blue, a member of the Greenway family, a Hall of Famer, and the next women's basketball coach at Tulane University, Ashley Langford. Let me lower this because I'm I'm a little guy. Hold on. David, did I hear that right? You tried to give my job away? That's what you said? You said it was my job from the beginning and then you tried to give it away? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> No, um, thank everybody for being here. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I just want to first give some shout outs and some thank yous because I wouldn't be here without a lot of support and a lot of people in my life. Uh, I'll start with President Fitz. I know he's not here, but uh, really appreciate the conversation that I had with him. And, you know, it was really important that I, I knew how much he cared about athletics and how important athletics is for this university. Uh, so I want to thank him. Uh, obviously, David Harris, you know, it, it was a quick week, right? I think we, <laughs> I, I stopped playing and, you know, in the next two days I was down in Atlanta and then I was in New Orleans and everything happened so fast, but I felt comfortable from the beginning. And I really appreciate the time that you took, listening to your vision, even though you're new too, just hearing that excitement. Um, you know, it's really important who I work for and who I work with. And I thought this was a fit. So thank you for everything you've done and answering all my questions and getting things done. So thank you for that. Uh, Jana, I don't know where you're at right now. There you are, all right. You, you've been the rock right here for me. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Uh, just everything, I don't know a lot, but coming to you and setting up my squad and my, my staff and all that and making sure we're good. So I really appreciate that support. Uh, Sharvi, I don't think she's here, but 
just being able to pick up the phone and call her and see how things are during maternity leave just shows her investment, right, in the women's basketball program um, and in myself. So again, felt really supported. Uh, my agent's here in the back, Brian, thank you for making it, right? He could have been at Tennessee right now, but he chose Tulane, all right? So I appreciate that. Uh, my family, so my dad's sitting right here in the front row and he's made a lot of sacrifices to get me to where I am right now and um, wouldn't be here without him. So there's days, I grew up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, right? Very cold, okay? Super cold, all right? It snows, guys. So I always used to shoot, I wanted to be outside and this guy right here would put gloves on and go rebound for me outside when it was snowing, right? That's how dedicated he was. Put me in so many different, go ahead, yeah, he deserves a, a clap. <laughs> Just sacrificed everything for me, can always come to you with advice, even if sometimes I don't wanna hear it, right? But uh, always points me in the right direction, always has my back, and I love you, thank you. Yeah, you're next, don't look away. <laughs> My sister, all right, uh, again, been my rock, someone that I can always depend on and go to, whether it's fashion advice, whether it's school, whether it's managing people, whatever it is, can always come to you, and you've always been my role model, um, and trying to just be like you, so thank you so much. Yeah, Boosie, it's, you, it's your turn, Q. All right, my nephew is here, all right. Um, Q just signed, a, well, he signed to go to Jacksonville State for baseball, all right, so yeah, that deserves a clap right there. He's trying to be humble right now, but he's not, so just wait later. He'll talk trash and all that later. Um, but no, super proud of you and all that you've become and the young man that you're gonna be, okay, in your career. So excited, thank you for that. Um, look, I know some of, my, some of my teammates are in here. I can't see everybody, but my teammates are in here. Corey and Lewis are in here. Some of my friends from you know, back in the day, right? So I appreciate you guys all being here. I'm really excited about being back home, right? Being back home. So many times we're, we're talking every day and it's like, hey, can you guys come see? No, we can't come to New York, all right? But now you have no excuse. You gotta come to every game, all right? No excuse. <laughs> uh, I can't go forward without looking back, all right? So Stony Brook University, I wanna thank them. Sean Hilburn, Debbie DeJong, you know, they took a chance on, on a, a first time head coach, right? And I was able to develop over three years and learned a lot during my Stony Brook career. Uh, so I can't forget them. Uh, I was able to grow a lot during that time. Uh, and my players as well, right? I appreciate all of them. Uh, we're locked in for life, that's what we always say. Um, that's how I'm gonna be with everybody. All of my players were always locked in. Doesn't matter where I go, I'm always gonna be there for them. Uh, but they're a part of who I am and I wanna thank them as well, okay? All right, why Tulane? You know, some people think this is easy, right? Why, you know? So for me, obviously, it's the pride, right? Pride of having, you know, coaching my alma mater. Love Tulane, love what it's done for me, right? Um, I always said, when people would ask me when I was an assistant coach, hey, uh, do you wanna, you wanna be a head coach at Tulane? Is that what you want? You wanna be here? Where do you wanna go? And I would always say, I just wanna coach somewhere that I would also attend, right? That I, I, I thought I fit, right? I thought I could coach those players, right? And so I went to Stony Brook, right? Never thinking I would have the opportunity to actually go and coach where I played, right? And went to school. So for me, it's full circle, okay? I'm excited about giving back to a university that gave so much to me. I had the best four years, right? Never thought I'd have an opportunity to actually come here and give back, and, and I'm excited about that, and I can't wait to do it, all right? The tradition, obviously Coach Stockton is a legend, right? She's a GOAT, that's what I always call her, all right? But the tradition here, you know, 21 post seasons. I, I, I like to win, y'all, okay? I'm used to winning, you heard the record, okay? So I wanna win and I wanna keep that going. Okay, I'm not gonna be shy about that. Okay, so the tradition that's already been here, been a part of it, right? I wanna continue that legacy. I wanna continue that tradition of winning in women's basketball. And that's what we're gonna do here. So that was easy right there. Alma mater and an opportunity to win, right? And continue this legacy was really important for me. I also thought, you know, when I'm recruiting young women, right? The competitive athletics and the high academics. I've always believed in that. I think that's super important. Obviously that's who I was and that's easy. Right, that's easy for me to talk about because I did it, I walked it, right? And a lot of our players, you know, they're not gonna go be pro. That's just, it, it happens, they're not going to, right? But what are they gonna do when they graduate? They're gonna know they're gonna go out here and be doctors, right? They're gonna go out here and be lawyers or whatever they wanna do and make a positive impact on our society. And here at Tulane, that is always gonna happen. I know that, I've lived it, right? That's the support that we have here, that's the expectation that we have here, and that's important for me in um, and, and a university that I represent. The resources, all right? So 
I've had to do a little research. It's a little different than when I came here, all right? It's a little different. And I told my team today, I said, you guys are welcome, right? For all the hard work we put in, you guys have beautiful facilities now. I'm excited about that. You know, I'm walking on campus the other day, and I'm like, where's Bruff? I, I had Bruff. Right now it's like commons, they got the Green Wave Grill, they got NIL, they got all this stuff that we didn't have, but I love that, right? It's, it's, it's awesome to see how much we've grown, right, as a community, uh, as a university, as an athletic program, right? We're on another level, and I love it, and I want to be a part of it, and I want to continue that climb, all right? New Orleans, man, I love New Orleans. Love it, love it. Okay, I usually come back once a year, don't always come to the campus, but I always come back to New Orleans once a year, okay? I just love the culture, I love the environment, my friends are here, uh, there's no place like New Orleans. Uh, I love crawfish, I'm so excited to eat some crawfish today, all right? Um, but yeah, all of that, it just makes this place a great, a great spot for me, all right? Uh, and lastly, you know, of why Tulane, Coach Stockton, right? It's, um, this is full circle for me. Um, I owe you a lot. Wouldn't be up here without you. Okay. And um, for me, being able to essentially take over the keys, right, after 30 years of building this program, the face of this program, being able to take over, I have so much pride to take over for you and to keep this thing going. Keep this thing going. All right. I promise. I'm not going to mess it up. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to tear up. I'm, I'm looking like you on your retirement speech. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I saw that you were doing this a couple of times. Yeah, trying to hold it back. Learn from the best. All right. Style of play, how we're going to play. All right. I just told our team today, uh, hashtag DWWD, and that stands for do what we do. All right, we're going to know what we do really well. We're going to be consistent with that. All right, our identity on the court, we're going to defend, we're going to rebound, and we're going to run. It's real simple. Basketball doesn't have to be complicated. All right, but it has to start on the defensive end. I told them today, and for everybody, just so you know, all right, defense is going to determine if we win the game. All right, offense is going to determine how much we win by. All right, so I'm serious about that. We're going to defend. All right, we're going to defend. So you guys get ready, get in a stance. All right. <laughs> Look, we got a rebound, controls the game, run. We're going to have fun in transition, though. All right, we're going to get out and run in transition. You know, I want about 20 points in transition. I want our players to have fun. I think that's an up-tempo game that everybody wants to see. Fans like to see it. All right, I do want to score points, okay? I want to score. I don't want the other team to score very much, all right? But we're still going to put points on the, on the board, all right? Um, we're going to play with an edge, all right? I talked to the team today about edge, but we're going to play with an edge. It's playing with urgency. No one's going to play harder than us, and we're going to be physical. And I mean that. No one's playing harder than us every time we step out there on Devlin or Fogelman. I don't know. I, I say Fogelman all the time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to say Devlin. All right. But we're going to get out there, and no one's going to outplay us on that court, I tell you that. Okay. And obviously, the goal for everybody is we're going to win championship. We're going to win a championship. That's going to happen. Okay. We're going to win a championship. <laughs> Obviously, you win a championship, you go dancing, right? We're gonna dance, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do the second line, we're gonna do all that celebration times, right? Just like Coach Stockton has done it a million times. Okay, so again, that tradition, that legacy is just gonna continue. Um, look, I I'm a passionate person, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm passionate. I love this game, I love the women that we coach, I love this university, right? And we are going to play with passion. You're gonna see it, you're gonna feel it. When you're in the gym, you're gonna connect to us. We're gonna be celebrating. We worked on our celebrations today, all right, in our first team meeting, okay? So we're, yep, exactly, Liz in third person. All right, we're, we're gonna make sure that we celebrate. All right, we're gonna have fun, okay? We're gonna work hard, but when we get to play, it's fun. Right? We should feel that. Fans, you guys, you guys are going to feel that. All right? But we have to have you there. All right? We have to have you there in Fogelman, right, supporting us. You'll be our sixth man so that we can all feel that energy and, and really turn it out. Okay? But you're going to see the chest bumps, the flex, all that kind of stuff, as long as the referees allow it. Right? We're going to be compliant there. But we're going to have fun. All right? We're going to have fun. Okay? This program is going to be a player-led program. All right? Uh, I'm going to – it's my job to guide, right, and give expectations but it's ultimately our players, they're, they're the ones that make everything go, right? They're the central, central figure, the central force, 
I'm all about players, right? Players make plays, not coaches. I'm a big believer in that, all right? So I'm gonna empower you guys to make those plays and make those decisions, right? On and off the court, okay? We're gonna love each other, a lot of love, a lot of love, okay? A lot of love and a lot of trust. And I talked to the team today about that, it takes time, but when you have love and you have trust, big things can happen. Great things can happen with those two things. All right, we're, we're gonna work hard. I told him today, look, I, I started at the bottom. I was a GA at Auburn for Nell Fortner, okay? She's now the head coach at Georgia Tech, okay? So I was dog sitting, I was going to get coffees. I was, I was doing, I was running around, I was doing all that kind of stuff, right? And I just, everywhere I went, just worked my way all the way up. Just hard work, nothing, nothing fancy, nothing special, just working, all right? So we're gonna work hard every single day, all right? We're gonna be very disciplined, okay? Can't win a championship without being disciplined, and we're gonna be resilient. Okay, we're not gonna be perfect, we're gonna have some failures, but we're gonna be resilient and get right back up and go, go compete, all right? So that's what our program values are gonna be. Uh, I, I love coaching, and I love coaching mostly, obviously I love the game of basketball, okay, love that, right? But it's, it's my job and our staff's job to develop well-rounded women, right? And it's not just on the basketball court. Right, I take pride in all of my players when they go get their first job, when they go get an internship, right, or when they're just coming in the office trying to figure it out, right? That, that to me is, is the fun part, right? And so it's not just on the court, I wanna make sure everybody here on my team and, and past players as well are well-rounded, able to go out in this society and make a difference with whatever they wanna do. Everybody has different dreams, all right? And it's my job and our staff's job to help them with their dreams, right, and give them options when they graduate. Some people wanna go play pro, some wanna go to, to law school, some wanna go to grad school, whatever it is, it's our job to put them in position to have options. And it's not just a one-way street, okay? You're gonna have options when you're here, all right? The last thing is a positive, positive experience. You know, and I can already tell that Tulane is great. Obviously, I'm an alum because we come back, right? There's some institutions where people don't come back because they didn't have a good experience, right? And that's important. I want all of our student athletes, all of our women to have a good experience. So now they're coming back. Now they're supporting our games, right? Now they're uh, at the Crawfish Fest. They're, they're around, right? They're helping mentor our current student athletes. That's important to me that everybody has a good, positive experience full of love and full of trust so they come back and give me a hard time too i love that stuff okay um look i'm excited right it, it's going to be a learning curve it's going to be different right but i think it's 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 going to be awesome right we're going to win a lot of games we're going to do it the right way full of passion full of celebration and we're going to continue this legacy that coach stockton left me with thank you Thank you, Coach. At this time, we'll open up the media questions for those in attendance. Jo uh, Joe and Connor will, are both equipped with microphones there on the sides, so please raise your hand to be recognized. And again, before you ask your questions, uh, Ashley likely remembers uh, a few of you, but please, for her benefit, state your name and affiliation. Who's first? You want to go? You want to go? Look at that. I guess I'll go. I don't know how I get the mic first at these every time. I'm sorry. Sorry for everybody having to listen to my voice. Um, one, you picked a good time. Crawfish prices have gone way down. I heard. So excellent time to eat that crawfish. And then two, can you talk about, you said it's a full circle moment, but there is pressure that comes with coming back to a place you know where you've had success, you know, instead of coming to a place that's kind of foreign or new. Sure. Is, is that more pressure and do you kind of relish that opportunity? I relish that opportunity. I've always enjoyed pressure. Um, you know, even coaching at James Madison, we always had our, the target on our back and we were expected to win 25 plus games, right? So I like being in that, in that spot, right? And for me, I, that's when I rise to the challenge. That's how I look at it. I don't look at it necessarily as pressure. I mean, there's imminent pressure, obviously, but I just wanna win. <laughs> Right, so I focus on that, doing little things every day to make sure that it puts us in position to win, um, and knowing that if I do that, I'll put myself in a good position. So I like it, I enjoy it. Hey coach, Andre Johnson from Fox 8. As a point guard, you typically acquire certain leadership skills. Do those same skills translate to coaching, and if so, how, does, how do they translate? A hundred percent, especially being a point guard. So. I got told how to be a point guard early in my career when I was a freshman, 
And Coach Stockton obviously was her point guard too, so she just continued to, to hone my skills. But yeah, you're as a point guard, and you're just used to running the show. And to me, that's what coaching is. And you're used to being in that position where everyone's looking at you, and you have to manage the court, manage the team. So I utilize a lot of that from my playing days. But I've learned a lot too, right? It's, it's it, coaching isn't just one way to do it. There's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different skill sets that you have to acquire along the way. I mean, most of the, most of the time, I'm not doing basketball. Right? That's not how we're winning games. We're not winning games just because of X's and O's. It's the relationships. It's managing. It's figuring out how people, how your players work and those little intricacies that don't show up on the court that we're doing behind the scenes so that they feel confident. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a balance. I, I did take some, but you know, I've, I've acquired a lot as well along the way. I, I had a second question. Um, can you maybe big picture the sport? Obviously, I think we all know what's happened in the last couple yeah. of years. I mean, just recently, the Caitlin Clark games have set insane records for television ratings from when you started playing college basketball 15 or 16 years ago to where it is now and how bright the future could be for your sport. This seems like a fantastic time to take over a program like this. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, women's sports matter. We've been saying that for a long time and I think everybody else is just finally getting on the bandwagon. Um, but women's basketball is awesome. It's been awesome, right? I'm just glad we're finally getting the respect that we deserve and the covers that we deserve. And yeah, I think it, it helps that we've got, you know, Kaylin Clark, Angel Reese, Paige Becker. We've got all these stars, right? But yeah, I'm excited about that. I want to continue this momentum that we have for women's basketball. And I'm hoping, you know, that this New Orleans community can understand that too and support our women uh, when we're playing our games as well. Hi, Ashley in the back. Lenny Van Gilder with Crescent City Sports. Can you talk about your time here as a player? I know you you came here as a freshman when Hurricane Katrina hit, which was a tumultuous time for all the students on campus and all the people of New Orleans. Can can you just talk about the, those those early times and how you, you you chose to you know stick with this and 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 do the things you did here in four years as a player? Yeah, I mean that was that was an experience and. Again, I'm from Pennsylvania. I didn't know anything really about hurricanes. Uh, but my freshman year, moving my things into my dorm room, and Coach Stockton says, hey, there's a hurricane coming. We got to evacuate. We didn't really think it was going to be anything major. Right? Then it changes, it changes right? But dur during that time, and I tell people this all the time, I thought the university and the, the other universities just did such a great job of taking care of us. Right? I, I didn't feel like I didn't have anything. I had everything we needed. I, I, we were out of Texas Tech, and yeah, that's a different world. but we were taken care of. We were taken care of and we were still able to practice. We were still able to play. And the way I look at it is there was, there was people that didn't have a house. There's people that died and, I'm, and we're able to, to still play this game and go to school, right? So I thought everybody that was involved and I know it was a collective effort really did a good job of supporting us through that time. Uh, it, it never wavered for me in terms of staying at Tulane. Um, I had a lot of pride for it. We were the first uh, sporting event to play post Katrina. I thought that was special. Um, and then after that, obviously we get back on campus year after year, it just continues to build. The, the city starts to come back. Uh, so I, again, it, it was tough to begin, right? It was very different, but I, we adapted. And I just think we were very fortunate. We were very blessed to even be able to continue our education and play games that, that season. Um, and again, my, my career here at Tulane was, was great. Uh, I was afforded so many opportunities on and off the court. I remember, I don't know, one summer, Coach Stockton was like, you need to go in SAC and you need to be the president by the time you graduate. I said, okay, I got you, all right? So, and I ended up being the president of the SAC by the time I graduated, right? So again, just those opportunities, the, the people that you're around at Tulane, your challenge in the classroom, uh, it's, it's really high caliber. So my, my career here was great. That's why I, I chose to come back here. Um, and all, a lot of our other alums come back here as well. Ashley, I think you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we spent two years playing together, and I will not forget this human right here who definitely took me in, challenged me, was competitive, and everything else in between. And so seeing you on stage is definitely a full circle moment because when I came to Tulane, the most important thing was to make sure that I felt like I was a part of a team. And you coming back to Tulane and thinking about, like, not thinking about knowing that you want to win, you have the uh, mentality and everything else in between to win. When you think about what's most important to you to build that community to ensure that happens outside of the X's and O's, what's most important to you? Good question, Tiff. Proud of you, by the way. Appreciate you. Yeah. Um, I think the love and the trust. That's what I started with in our program values. 
Um, and love to me is a connection. I'm a connection head coach. I need a connection with my players, all of them. And they're gonna be, all be different, different levels, right? Um, and they need a connection to me as well. So I think that connectivity with that love and that trust, you can get through anything. And I've seen from previous teams, but yeah, I gotta get in here right now and I've gotta develop these relationships. And that's what we're gonna do, you know, this off season, right? And going into the summer. But it's it's not just, you know, Kyron on the court, right? It's, it's, it's the whole Kyron, right? It's the whole person. And when players know that you care about them more than just basketball, right? They'll run through a wall for you. And I've had that experience with my players at Stony Brook. Hey, Coach, over here, Jared Paul Joseph with the WGNO. You already talked a couple of times about the opportunity to come in and take over for Coach Stockton, but going back to the moment when you realized that was the realization for you, what were your thoughts and feelings? Good question. And I'm a very honest person. It was a whirlwind, y'all, okay? I literally went from playing a game, coaching a game at Illinois, all right, and then getting a call the next day. So it happened so fast. I don't think I was able, I was able to really take it all in until yesterday. I'm serious, right? Until yesterday, getting here, getting out of the van, you know, seeing Riptide, like, and right now. So I'm getting there now, but it's always been for me more about just continuing her legacy and that's being, that being really cool. I, I don't know how many players are able to take over for the head coach that coached them for four years. I, I, that might actually, someone should do that stat, right? I don't know if that's, if that's happened, right? So that for me was very emotional and I thought a lot about that, but actually physically coaching, I haven't even gotten there yet. I'm just happy to be here, be home, be around people that I love, right? Seeing old faces and familiar faces um, and, and the opportunity to continue to win um, at a high level. So uh, excited, full circle. Uh, I, I promise I'll be a little bit more. Now things are calmed down, I'm here. Uh, I'll think about it a little bit more. Would you talk about the uh, conference championship you won, the team that you won won at here at Tulane, and what stayed with you all the way to now as far as uh, your coaching, your coaching style, and just, you know, what stayed with you from that championship team? It's funny, people ask that a lot in terms of remembering, and I try to tell players all the time, you don't remember the X's and O's. <laughs> you don't. You don't remember any of that. You just remember how it felt. Like I remember when we won it, getting the banner and holding it up and running, running away with it and being happy, right? But I don't, I don't know what we ran. Do you remember what we ran? I don't know, right? It was better than, it was better than whoever right? we were playing at the time. But um, so to me, it's about the feeling, right, of that. And you know, in my coaching career, I think I've taken a lot just from Coach Stockton in terms of I thought Coach was really good at staying even keeled and being consistent, right? Every day every game, I knew what I was gonna get from Coach Stockton, right? And I really try to be like that as a coach um, because I think when players know what to expect, right, they're more prepared, um, you know, and they have less anxiety, there's less, right? So just being consistent and, and being even keeled. Now I'm a little bit more fiery than coach, right? But, um, but I'm consistent with that, right? I'm consistent with that as well, right? So they're gonna know what they're gonna get. So, uh, but no, I, Again, it's, it's the feeling. And even on my assistant, when I was assistant, we've won championships. I, I don't remember exactly what we were in. I don't even remember exactly what plays, right? But I do remember the feeling, the emotions, the connectivity, how close we were, the fun times, and the locker room on the bus. Like, that's the stuff that you remember 20 years later, right? And now you, you might remember who you beat, right? You do remember that, but it, it's the connect, it's the relationships. That's what really stays with you. People ask me all the time, you know, would you do it all over again in terms of picking my college? And I always say yes, and I want that for my players. I always want them to pick Tulane over and over again, all right? And I never knew I would come to this point, but I get to pick Tulane, hopefully, for the last time, all right? And I'm here for a long time, and I'm here to win for a long time. I'm excited to be your head coach. Thank you. Thank you again, Coach, for our immediate attendance. Please go ahead and make your way to the bunker suite for additional availability with Coach Langford and Mr. Harris. Before that, though, we'll have a brief photo opportunity on stage right here with Coach. And for any of our specially invited guests, please join us at the reception behind the curtain for some light refreshments.
Thank you to everyone for attending today, and roll wave. Talking in this or no? no, no, no.